restrictions were imposed this year, per capita water use in California urban areas has dropped more than 30%. But there's an 800-pound gorilla in the room when it comes to water, and that's agriculture, which consumes more than 80% of all the water in the West. Unlike cities, farmers have not been ordered to cut back. Complicating things further is the fact that so many farmers are now growing alfalfa, most of which is shipped overseas where it's fed to livestock. Right now, water law protects the farmers, but if the drought persists, something might have to give. EI team's George Knapp traveled to the Imperial Valley for this report. The massive sand dunes at the entrance to the Imperial Valley are a stark reminder what this place would look like without water. It might as well be the surface of Mars. But down in the valley itself, an agricultural horn of plenty is on display. You name it, it grows here. 75 different crops, 80% of our winter vegetables. Citrus orchards sit adjacent to plantations of date palms. Every patch of ground is prowled by enormous mechanical beasts that either kick up dust for a future harvest or reap the bounty of a current crop. Food grows where water flows is the slogan favored by farmers during the drought. And in the Imperial Valley, water flows everywhere. Dams and levees divert 3.1 million acre feet per year from the Colorado River for this one valley, 10 times what Nevada gets per year, three times more than what the rest of California is allowed. Every road, every farm is crisscrossed by flowing streams or concrete trenches brimming with water. The rest of the West is withering, but in this valley, drought is non-existent. This exact spot illustrates a major point. On one side is a field of cotton. On the other side is a field of alfalfa. These are two of the most water-intensive crops that exist. People ask, does it make sense to grow these? in one of the hottest, driest places in North America. I think in the world we live in today, it's pretty hard to justify growing cotton and alfalfa uh, in the southwestern United States. Water policy expert Dr. Peter Glick knows these are fighting words to farmers, but that one way or another, agriculture is going to have to budge. Farmers elsewhere in California will lose $3 billion this year because of the drought. Water cutbacks have already been imposed on California cities. A recent study by Glick Pacific Institute determined California could save 14 million acre feet per year, enough to accommodate everyone, but it will have to include greater efficiency by farmers. Imperial Valley is the poster child for inefficiency. Its number one crop by far is alfalfa, feed for livestock, not people, most of which is exported to Asia. It takes seven feet of water per acre to grow alfalfa in such a hot, dry place. And because water law says use it or lose it, efficiency is not always a priority. Farmers still rely on flood irrigation, which results in massive waste, leaving inches of standing water in fields and so much runoff that it's created the Salton Sea, an inland ocean. In both California and Arizona, farmers get government incentives to grow cotton, though it takes six times as much water per acre as, say, lettuce. Grow cotton and alfalfa somewhere else, Glick argues. Even modest cutbacks in alfalfa and cotton could save an enormous amount of water. Ask water expert David Kennedy what he would do if he were water god for a day, and he says change the laws which give older agricultural water claims precedence over urban uses, and also do away with use it or lose it. They really have no precedent or, or uh, comparable example anywhere in the world. They're a peculiarity of the American West. Um, and it's high time we revisited them, I think, and came up with a more efficient system of allocating the finite supply of water that we have. Nevada water honcho John Ensminger wants no part of dictating to farmers what they can grow. He agrees the U.S. is, in effect, exporting water by selling alfalfa to China, but says we also import a lot of water in the form of goods we buy made with Chinese water. Even with the current drought and looming climate change, there's enough water to go around, he says, but everyone will have to adjust. We would have a system that would allocate that risk where the cities would have to live within their means and one way or another agriculture would have to live within their means. George Knapp, 8 News Now. Alfalfa production in California dipped a little bit since last year but it has taken a big jump here in drought-stricken Nevada. 
Hay is now the number two agricultural crop in Nevada behind beef. 